one pocket tournament. It's only fitting that it boiled down to all of this. We've got two beautiful trophies here for our first and second place finisher. We also have a trophy for Mr. Joyner. First place is $15,000, second place is $7,500. Let's show these players your appreciation for the greatest two one pocket players in the world right here, Efren Reyes, Shannon Dalton. Glad for the break, gentlemen. Good luck. Hello everyone, welcome back. This is Joey Augustin, Joey A from the Internet Pool Forums, and I'm here in the booth with Jeremy Jones, and we're about to witness a great match again between Efren Reyes and Shan Dalton. It looks like uh, Efren has won the lag once again, a very important lag. Don't you agree, Jeremy? Yes, I do agree, and, and uh, Shannon got a bit better there, but so did Efren. Efren laid it down about an inch from the rail, it looked like. Exactly. And uh, real quick, Joey, uh, I'd like to give a shout out to Bobby Roan, Clark Roan, and Louis Vicchio. They, uh, you know, for me personally, and I, I didn't, I'll be the first to say I didn't play very well here and I didn't cash in any event, but they've done a fantastic job here. Um, they've given away a lot of prize money, added a lot of money to the event, and, and the main thing is they've had a few stress points this week. I mean, the, you know, with the lightings and, and, and dealing with three or four or five hundred pool players of course um but they've done it with a smile on their face the entire week and they've tried to be helpful as much as they can and, and this is a, is a learning experience for for them a lot of people have to realize this and they're the type of guys that are just going to make it bigger and better uh next time they host they've done a great job uh, they've taken on an enormous task uh, with all of these multiple events and this uh, magnificent uh setting that uh, moody gardens is and uh, we're, we're so happy that uh, people that uh, care about pools so much like the Taylor Road production crew uh, uh, that they're participating in uh, the, the pool events like this. And uh, we're just looking forward to bigger and better events in the future with them. And uh, thanks very much for mentioning that. You know, they, they've done all sorts of little things. Just one quick thing before Shannon gets this role in here. You know, what pool event have you ever been to where they've provided where the tournament promoters have provided free shuttle service for all of the pool players sure yeah. and, and you can you know it's just like the classiest hotel in the nation or somewhere i mean you can make an appointment for your your ride to the airport no matter when or who you are you know doesn't matter they want everyone accommodated you you you, you want to go out to eat a meal or travel or see something in the city of galveston Call one of the shuttle guys, and they, they'll drive around like a chauffeur. It's magnificent. Uh, yeah, thank you, uh, Taylor Road Production. Y'all have done a wonderful job here, and uh, we just really appreciate your efforts. Efren didn't get a cushion there. I don't know if he's going to realize that. He owes one. Now he owes two. And uh, Actually, he's on two fouls. I don't know if the tournament director realized that, but he scratched on the break. And the next shot, guy he shot, he's on two fouls. But it's still, the way the balls ended up is worth it. So. Mm hmm. The problem here is uh, where do you leave Efren? I mean, you know, if you could pick the cue ball up and put it somewhere, that'd be a different story. But What about, uh, what about kicking the 11 in? Well. That's our, that shot's fine if, if the ball was off the rail a little bit where it was a hanger to kick in. I mean, coming off the six and laying him down below the 11, like going to the rail with a little spin and leaving him below, the problem with that is the 415 bank is very makeable, especially with the 11 there. Yeah. I don't know if Shannon's going to try and look at something aggressive, like trying to rearrange the balls a little bit. I don't know if that's even possible. Tell you what, that 13-7 uh, seems to be facing his pocket, but uh, I think uh, the 15 is blocking the hole. Yeah, I don't think that's too much of an option, but I'll tell you what, he, he, he might have to, like, bank the one towards his pocket and leave him up in the top right-hand pocket again, leaving him, like, no combination on the balls. Well, I, I mean, that's I don't awful. Like that. I don't like that shot. That's... It's tough. I mean, he's in a tough position. I mean, it, the he, nine, the nine ball cuts, the eight ball cuts. Yeah, but I mean, you're talking about. Sometimes you have to apply the pressure. And not only that, yeah, the, those are two 
two easiest shots. That's what, this is what I was talking about being aggressive, trying to rearrange the balls, shooting the 8 into the 11 some type of way, or the 8 into the 9 and then into the 11, or the 9 into the 11. Right. That's what he's doing here. He's trying nine, to... He's, 9 into the 11. This is rearranging the furniture. So we say. So we say. Oh, no. Well, I don't know if he can make the 11, but the 415 is pretty makeable. And that's a little unfortunate, really. He doesn't really understand how he shot a ball by the 11 without touching it. He was hoping the ball that went in Efren's pocket, the 8, he was hoping that the 8 would touch the 11 and move it out as he was making the 8 for Efren. This uh, 415 is uh, not all that easy with the cue ball fixed yeah. to the 11 and close to the rail. Oh, Efren might just shoot off the 9 and leave him over kind of tough. Oh. Uh, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't see the point in doing this. Well, I mean, the thing about this is uh, Shannon really doesn't have anything that will go to his pocket. So I really like to come off the 9 right here. You don't really want to shoot to try and bank the 9 in. Right. You already have the 11 where you want it. You just want the cue all over on the right side of the table. There's a little carom on this uh, 415 that might be available too. Yeah, but I think Efren's probably looked at that. I don't think it's, I think it's possible to make it, but you got to go through the 4 with a lot of English. Right. Difficult, difficult, difficult. Mm -hmm. He's going to bank the nine, try and get something close to on his side. And this is what I was talking about before, banking the one and leaving Efren one of these right. big combinations. You know? Now, I mean, Efren, you know, doesn't look like great things for Shannon, but like I was getting at earlier, when the pressure's on you, sometimes you got to turn it around and let the pressure be on your opponent. I mean, right. Efren can make something here, possibly, but he's going to have to make a good shot to do it. Now, another deal here is Efren should come all the way back up table. See how he came all the way back up? Maybe too far back up. Yep. Oh, yep. too far. Yep. Wow. But, I mean, that's going to help Shannon a lot, but I'd still say, even with ball on Efren's a favorite to win this game. And Efren knows to. <laughs> Gee whiz. So that's why Shannon might not even shoot at the nine. I mean, he, he might elect, unless he can get some type of position on something that's pretty solid. See, see if he gets placed position on this 8-2 and he falls funny, he's going to trap himself. Mm-hmm. I would definitely not snooker myself on the 11 right here. I'd try to make it where I, I can definitely get to the 11. And he does. And he does. He, he played both ways. Just in case he doesn't like the combo, he can shoot the 11 in. I, I really like that comment that you just made just now, Jeremy, about uh, making sure that, uh, you know, you have access to the 11 ball in case you get a little funny on the A2. That's sure. a great insight there. Thanks. Yeah, and, and the main reason for that is that you can't, Shannon can't win a game with this inning, but he could certainly lose it. So you don't want to do that. I mean... Anytime you, there's no possibility of running out, you don't want to take a chance of losing the game. That was a nice shot. He's overhit this a little, but that's okay. He's he wanted to get where he could shoot the five on the 11 and get something going towards his hole. Right. But now he's just going to have to pocket the 11 and leave the cue ball where, where Efren can't make the 415 bank. He was, uh, which he is was pretty gonna, nifty. Yeah, uh, Shannon was going to attempt to make the 11 ball and bank the five toward his hole. Is that correct? Either that or hit the hit the five on the side of the eleven and try and get the eleven out. Oh, here this is a good shot. Now he's just got to make sure he makes the eleven though with the cue ball. This is uh, no good. No good. No good. See, yeah, and, and that was putting a lot of pressure on himself. I mean, don't get me wrong, it would have been a nice shot. But does again, the only thing he could really do is lose the game with it. He couldn't win the game with the shot. Does Efren shoot the uh, fifteen ball right now into the eleven? I don't think so. I mean, it's a possibility, I guess. It's got to be sitting pretty good. I think it is, though. He's, if he does, he's going to shoot it pretty firm. He's not going to shoot it soft, I don't think.
If he can get that cue ball behind that four ball. If he was to get on the eight, though, that's all he needs. If he could shoot the 11 and get on the eight. Yeah, he's going to have the four and the 12 after this, but he's going to shoot this pretty firm. You called it. And very, very firm indeed. I was actually going to say that, too, that if he shoots it hard, that ball could come up and break the other balls out. Well, unfortunately, he's landed on the rail. Yeah, that was the thing that, about the shot that I didn't like. It's, if you're going to shoot it, you got to hold the cue ball because I'm not saying it's tough, but he can't shoot the 8 in good position. He's going to almost have to shoot the 12. And Efren is thinking, man, I could miss this. Ooh. Even though. <laughs> Ooh, that's a terrible thought. It is a terrible thought, but he didn't want to be on that rail, I guarantee it. And the reason why he can miss it is because he's got to shoot it soft. This table's like glass. Exactly. Now, the ball to get on is the 15. You see the 15 up there? Yes. That's the out ball. If he can draw his ball here and get all the way up for the 15, that's all he'll need. Oh, his, his draw stroke's a little weak. Okay. But he still got there. He's all right. Right. Of course, it's awfully easy from the booth, Joey. We don't miss too many balls from here, Jeremy. No, don't even bobble them. <laughs> Well, he's got to watch uh -oh, out for the uh -oh, one. Uh -oh, he's still uh -oh. got the five, though. So yeah, he's going to pick up that thirteen, and he might go ahead and go for the three. Yeah, because he needs so many. I think he might go ahead and get on the three because the five's always there. Right, and the one goes as well. I think. And he uh, didn't get enough juice no, on he's, it. He's, he's still okay. If he shoots the uh, the one, might not go. I guess he's going to fall for the four. Right. I would probably draw one around, shoot the five, and come across and bump the, one, the 10 or the 14. That's my, just my choice. Well, if he makes his three ball, he can pick up the four. He can also make the six from this side of the table with an easy cut into the corner pocket. Yeah, and then you still have the five. Right. But he, he owed two, so you got to remember, he still needs five. So I think the shot here is to, to shoot this in. Oh, he's going to hold for the... He's either going to get for the four or the six, like you were talking about, Joey. Okay. Yeah, the six balls opened up there. All right, so he's going to come one rail out to the center for the five and then come across and bump the 14 is what I would think anyway. I agree with you. Yeah. And I want you all to notice, oh, he's he's only reason he's going around here to let his stroke out, he's still going to get the same angle. Let his stroke out, and yeah, that's right. And 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 he and he tr tracks that cue ball directly on the path that he wanted to be in in the first place. Yeah, and, and he's going to go ahead and get on the four, which I don't, I don't. I like getting on the fourteen. That's just me, though. Yeah, I mean, he got lucky here, got a little fortunate, but he could have come across pretty easy on the fourteen there and yep. opened everything up. Yeah. Let's see. There's uh, five balls left on the table. Shannon has two. That means that Efren's made eight balls. He needs two more, right, Jeremy? That's correct, unless he's pocketed another ball in another pocket. But uh -huh. I want you all to notice, though, on his run, how he stayed above the balls. He always stayed above the balls. Uh-oh, look at this. Oh. Boy, that ball hung there precariously for just a couple of milliseconds. And yeah, that was pretty risky there. And Jeez. this is, I'll tell you what, this one ball bank is pretty risky. Cause, no uh, doubt. I mean, I know it's his out ball. Can he draw this uh, cue ball back? I think it's land perfect to do that, but I, this is time for me to shoot the 14 away if I'm Efren. There's two balls coming on the spot. He's going to be in a precarious position if he just shoots something at his hole right here. Well, I mean, they're all going to be right there for Shannon to steal the game, is my that, point. That's right. Uh, I think uh, one of the most important things that Efren can do is to leave this cue ball frozen to the foot rail or wherever he decides to put it. Uh, wow. I don't I don't know. I, like I said, I didn't watch Efren through the tournament much. And I don't know if he was playing like this through the, the entire tournament, but he's playing awfully aggressive. I mean, and I don't mean there's that's a bad thing, but it, when once you have this big lead... He just switched hands. Oh, he's one of the best left-handed. Yeah, see how you notice how he's getting this ball on the side, the 14, kind of out of play for Shannon. Two of them are coming on the spot. And that 14 can't be banked in Shannon's hole. It might be able to be kicked into his hole, but... Uh, Two or, railed, maybe, or yeah, something. Yeah, something crazy. But but Shannon's going to... Uh, 
Shannon's going to two rail the ten. That's what he's going to do for sure. He's going to try and stun the cue ball. What's up. he going to do with the cue? He's just going to well here here's leave, the, leave, he's leave stun the front. cue ball up to the middle of the side rail here, maybe about the first diamond by the side pocket. Uh, I don't know if it's going to float up that high. He's just going to stun it. Yeah, hmm. uh, that th that thirteen is. Uh oh, he may have made it. It's ever hmm. so close. Well, now Efren's got a decision. Need, Efren needs one ball. Efren's going to soft kick the 10, I suspect. I mean, that's just, that's really his play here. I mean, he could make the 13 at his hole. He could make the 1 at his hole. He could do a lot of things, but, but why give up, you know, the possibility of four balls and, and easily? Even banking the 1 over on his side and following to the side rail and down to the low rails, all right. And you called it right off the bat. Yeah, but he's giving him a little air here. I don't know if Shannon can see the 1. He could two rail the one and, and, and get something and, and put him over there a little funny. I mean, Shannon's got a good opportunity here. I wouldn't be following this, so I think I'd be sticking him on the side rail. He might get a kiss here. Ooh, oh, boy. wow. So close to a kiss. Well, Shannon actually, if he could hit it that good, that was definitely the shot up table. He's getting Efren. Uh, Efren's in a spot here. Got to be careful. Got to be real careful. Could float in uh, the the uh, corner pocket yeah. off the uh, one. Mm -hmm. uh, he's just going to hit the one on the, this side, I think, and bank it up and put the cue ball on the end rail. Oh, well. I don't think he wanted to give Shannon a, a bank on that one, but he may have done that in spite of his effort. I don't know if he wanted to uh, let Shannon see the 14, too, so Shannon could get the 14 in play. Well, right now, I, I don't think he can see the 14. No, he can't. Shannon's going to bank the one. I guess he's going to, looks like he's going to run the cue ball into the 14. Maybe let the 14 drift back across on his side. Let the cue ball go up to the end rail by the chalk. I believe that's the shot he's looking at. Like so. He hit a little hard, but but he's getting them in play, though. I mean, the cue ball kind of got away from him. But. Well, what's he going to do with this uh, one ball? Is he going to try and really move these balls, freeze the cue on the back rail? Uh, typically, a lot of players will just slam that one into the 10 or the 7 and try well, and leave the cue ball back on this rail. I think he, this is a good good time to move some myself. That's just what I think. You know, I mean, he didn't kill it no. or he didn't control, but... Well, you got that one ball way down there. and yeah. The 10 ball goes here, though. The 10 ball bank goes. If the 10 ball bank goes in right here this game is about seven to five favorite for Efren mm -hmm. even though he only needs one Shannon makes a lot of these banks too he hit that one perfect he hit that one perfect oh, oh. my goodness Sh Shannon's a dangerous individual to leave a bank to I know that well the score in this match is uh, seven to two this is the first game of the finals, finals, one pocket championship here in Galveston, Texas at the World Classic. The Efren's a little funny right here. I'm not saying it's a real super, he can't really move him way out of there though without letting the cue ball get turned loose. He's going to bank this back towards the one, I think. Oh no, he banked it the other way. If that goes in, oh, that's perfect for Efren right there. All right, Shannon. Shannon's got a couple options. He's looking at kicking that one, but I yeah. don't think that's kicking a good idea. Kicking the one's idea. a good shot, though. The balls. I mean, you got to continue to put heat on Efren right here. You got to you got to kick this one. I mean, it's close enough to the rail. He should be able to stop his cue ball. Just a little bit of top left English, maybe a Q-tip of left. Very fine shot. Yeah, he just. Wish I'd have seen him and hold the too. rock a little bit because these are both getting out of town yeah, here. Yeah, he's The only thing Efren wants to do is uh, make sure he controls that cue ball and doesn't give uh, Shannon an easy bank on the uh, yeah, 14. The, that's what I was about to say. He's hoping he gets a kiss over here. That way the balls don't both go to Shannon's side. Mm -hmm. Shannon's going to have to bank the 14 right here and just let Efren go. He's got to hit this with pocket speed and leave it right in front of the hole. Mm -hmm. Pocket speed? I, I, I think he's going to roll the cue ball down to the end rail. I mean, either that, you could bank it down towards the first diamond and jack him up over the 10. 
Oh, he's, he's going to fire this. Pick up this, the huh? thirteen. Yeah. Uh, either that, or he might stop. Try and get a bank on the seven. Hmm. Which uh, I, I almost think he could roll the bank, and, and maybe not have as much percentage of making it. But again, you're going to have to have effort and make a mistake here. Oh, he went for the thirteen. Yeah. Well, this is. This could be difficult here. This could be the end yeah. of the first game here. I don't know if he can make it, but I, I don't know if it really goes by the seven. But he can get it probably hung up or close. Yeah, this is going to catch us. Oh no, he made it. Hit it perfect. Game one in the, in the history books. Well, there you have it. Uh, for those of you who have just joined us, this is Joey Augustin, Joey A. from the Internet Pool Forums. And I'm here in the booth with Jeremy Jones. This is the finals one pocket championship here at Galveston, Texas at the World Classic. The race is to three. It's for $15,000. And Mr. Reyes leads his match one to zero. Shannon is uh, going to be breaking the balls here. And I'm interested to see how Shannon breaks the balls. We had a little discussion in, in the break in between the first and second set. And I told him that I thought he needed to bring the cue ball out a little bit on this slick table, and he thinks so too. Uh, Let's see if he does. Yeah, he brought it out a little bit. I'd say another four inch, but uh, both times in the first set he sold out. So he needs to do this and not baby the break. That way you don't get the kiss on the 13. See how the cue ball deflects a little more? Uh-huh. Even though he left him a bank, a free bank on the three. Wow. Well, not too free. The one ball well, yeah, can, but I mean, can go. It can go, but, I mean, he's he's going he's gonna to let him shoot it. The, uh, even though the one's pretty easy and bigger to make, I, I've got to believe Efren's shooting this three ball bank right here. He's just going to roll it right in. Now, let me ask you. Couldn't he just stop the cue and do the 10-13 combo? He might draw this back. So, right. So, right. Yeah, yeah. yeah, exactly. So he can't make the other ball. Oh, he just missed the bank. And, and, and sold him and, out. Oh, my, my, my. Well, from Shannon's look, it doesn't look like he can make any. Well, he can kick that three in. Yeah, but it's, unless you can catch enough of the one, it's really worthless because you're going to hide behind the four, and you want to get the bank on the fourteen, on the thirteen. Excuse me. I mean, like, that shot there. I don't know. You kind of give up your advantage. I think. I mean, it can be made. Well, maybe there's something else that he can find. Well, the ten thirteen scrambling that back towards the socket is going to get a kiss. Not really a sellout kiss, but they're not really going to go towards his hole, even though I think he's going to shoot it anyway. Well, if he gets a kiss, uh, you're talking about the 10 uh, is going to kiss the 13? It, well, if he shoots it towards his hole, it looks like the 10 will come down and the right. 13 will come across and he'll get another kiss. Well, on that the might be 13. good if he shoots it could with be. speed, you know. Could be. Yeah, could he, be. he could, uh, you know, I mean, he's got a he's yeah, got he's, a caravan down there with the Yeah, he's going to leave one, the cue ball on the side rail anyway. Yeah. I mean, it's not, I'm saying it's not a definite make, though. He might not get the kiss. Oh, he didn't. He's going to make that. Great shot. Fantastic. See where he left the cue ball, though, one pocket players? That was the main objective there. I he's, just, uh, he's just got to go to shoot the 11-13 in. I think he can bring the cue ball with top top left English to this side of the stack still. Try, try and protect that uh, one ball? Well, and try and get pos some position, too. I mean, he might even come into the 15. Or he might just come over and try and get out. Because Efren really doesn't have anything that'll go. Ah. No. And that was, he jumped up just a little bit. It doesn't take much. Uh, and uh, it looks like in these tournaments, as uh, you get closer to the finals, you see a lot of players uh, rising up and, uh, you know, feeling the pressure of the, of the shot and, and the match. And it's, it's only Thursday, but it's been a long uh, six days for a lot of these players. They've played a lot of matches. And uh, honestly, uh, they've played games that uh, they, they're probably not used to playing as much. I mean, we had a lot of guys that are great players that played in the one pocket 
pocket that normally don't play quite as much one pocket and they play a lot of eight ball. I mean, those are thinking games. So anytime you're using that brain, it's going to tire you out a little quicker. You know, ten ball or nine ball is more of a, just a, a rhythm game. Look at uh, Efren looking at the carom. I don't think this is any good. I don't think it goes. Oh, yeah, straight in. Now what? <clears throat> Live to fight another day. Wow. Score is now one to one. He just knows that the balls are going in because me, I would never shoot that shot because I couldn't get any position. I didn't think it, I wouldn't think it'd be worth the risk, but he doesn't see any risk because he knows it's going to go in. <laughs> That's right. If it falls, no problem. See, he's kind of not trapped himself, but he's kind of put himself in a difficult, difficult position. He's going to have to shoot the left. He might try and make the 11 off the one, but I doubt it. Oh, I see what he's looking at there. He's looking at moving all three balls. He's looking at shooting 11 on the top side of the 13 and bearing the one up table. Hmm. That's a... And, that's and, a and, and watch the 13 go out at... 13 will go three rails out. The 11 will come... 11 might catch a kiss, but he's going to move all three balls right here. Watch the cue ball. Off the 11 into the one and draw back. My, my. He tried to move all three. Again, that that's not typical one pocket though. I mean, a shot that you really can't win the win the match with, but you could lose it. You want to contain in those spots. Well, I think he uh, Efren's made a critical mistake here. There's a lot of balls that are open. Uh, there's four easy balls, uh, and the 11 ball even can be made in this corner pocket as well as the 15. So, yeah, Shannon needs to just settle himself a little bit because he's getting a lot of opportunities. Oh, he's, he sees the combo, or oh, he's going to have to shoot the nine. Yeah. It's all right, though. Yeah. Of course, we always say, well, there's nothing that Efren can make, but <laughs> that's kind of a silly statement, isn't it? That's right. I think he might uh, want to try and come pick up this 11 ball if he can get past the the uh, four ball. Oh, he's, yeah, if he makes the nine, he won't touch the four. In fact, I was thinking he might come two rails across for the four. Hmm. Because the lay's kind of a natural, like a center English cut, maybe a touch of inside. I don't really like the seven fourteen two. I think the nine's a shot. Just, I mean, Shannon's a great shot maker. He's just got to calm himself, and shoot this in nice and smooth. I think he'll get position on the four or the one, with no problem. Uh -oh. oh no! Oh boy! What a what a rotten roll that yeah. was! Yeah. The only reason that happened, he, t he hit it a touch thick. I mean, he hit it to the top le left side of the pocket a little bit. If he had hit it a little bit more towards the center, I think you would have gone inside of the 12 in between the 4 and the 12. But He was playing too real shape like you were talking about for yeah. the 4, though. Still a little unfortunate, though, to get, you know, travel. What, what is that, 4.5, four 4.5? Four that's 9 feet. And go right by the 12 and scratch in the side, especially in ground. I mean, well, what's uh, even more brutal about this is it was Shannon's break, and next game it's going to be Efren's break. And if Efren happens to win this game, well. Yeah, if he gets properly on 13, I'm in trouble. I can't believe he did that. But he hit it perfect. My goodness. Which, with ball in hand, Efren, that's, if, when, a lot of the times when he tries to break balls out, he does it with top English. I mean, he's just amazing with top English. He can keep the line that he wants. Yeah, well, this is uh Yeah, he spread those balls pretty well. Adios, amigos, here. Five balls between... Uh, Two-nothing lead. Yep. Uh, you got one, one, a little far there. He wanted to actually be able to shoot the eight and bump the two is what he really wanted to be able to do. Mm-hmm. That's why he was a little disturbed after that ball boinged. But, again, I th I still think he'll create a way to run out. Well, not if he gets straight in on this ball. Well, no, he's got a he's little, got a little bit angle. angle. Yeah. He's going to come one rail cross, I think, for the 13. Leaving an angle where he can come straight up for the 2 and bump the 2. Either that or get on the 5. Now, if he can come straight up and bump the 2, that's the shot I really like. But 
Well, he can he can put a nice firm, uh, you know, nice firm stroke on the uh, 13 ball and uh, go two rails into the one. Yeah, he can do that. The way this table is pretty easy to control that straight up and down shot, though. Like he didn't even want to; he just decided to play the combo. But I think he could have pretty easily bumped that two if he if he chose. Now he's got the. Well, I'm really, uh, just for me, myself, I, I love one pocket so much. I'm kind of a little upset we haven't gotten a little bit more into the game, for especially for the fans. I mean, I'm not saying these guys aren't playing great, but they've been kind of quick games, you know, a lot, and a lot of the up table game hadn't got to get seen. So, right. Hasn't got well, to be they, seen, excuse me. <laughs> the fans have had a chance to see Efren come out of the one loss side where Shannon put him and uh, fight back to, um, you know, to this finals match. So they've seen some excellent pool, uh, some different some different strategies that we've seen Efren playing a little more aggressive than, uh, uh, than we expect at times. He's banking the Six eight and sticking them in the stack. See, Shannon looks really comfortable on a lot of shots. Just a few things here and there. Yeah, we'd like to take this uh, moment to thank some of our sponsors: Predator and Poison Cues, Simona's Cloth and Aramith Pool Balls, Ashley Furniture, a non-billiard supply uh, sponsor. It's great to have them uh, with us. Hertz Rent a Car, Inside Pool Magazine, Radio One. Billiard Factory and ProPool.com, the Stats Guys, Ron Hoffman, Bob McFerrin, and Mike Stats Guys. Appreciate it, all your help at this tournament. Today, uh, for those of you just joining us, I'm Joey August and Joey A from the Internet Pool Forums, and I'm here in the booth with Jeremy Jones, and we're at the finals one pocket championship here at the World Classic in Galveston, Texas. Taylor Road Productions is the promoter of this event, and they've done a fantastic job. We're looking at a match between the finals match between Shannon Dalton and Efren Reyes. Efren leads the match two to zero. Shannon is at the table. The score in this game is zero zero. Shannon's got a pretty nice shot. I mean, Efren kind of just left him where it's pretty available, and he's hit it perfect. A great shot by Shannon. A great shot. Does he draw back on the two to make the seven ball to clear that seven out? No. I, I, again, like I was telling you earlier, you want to stay above the balls. I mean, the low balls, you can almost always get to. Mm -hmm. he, he wants to try and get something to be able to rub the pack open a little bit. So if he can get on the two, shoot the two, possibly get on the four where he can go into the balls. Even though they're not sitting great to break break the balls up, but I don't think I'd pass the two ball up though. It looks like here, he's trying to bust up the stack right away. Yeah, he might get he might get doubled up with a combination right here. No, he hit it good. Didn't hit it that hard, but he might have a three ball combo on the twelve nine fourteen. He's I don't know looking the, at it. If he got where the ten goes or not. He's looking at it. Carefully. Of course, he is in the way right now. But after he after he shoots the eight out, I wonder if the ten goes. He's definitely got the two or the two ball bank. I think the three ball combo. He likes it. He's going to spin the cue ball out. And he just can't get get what he wants. Just not getting what he wants on the shots. Oh, the single. I I don't know if he can predict making this. Well, uh, a half ball hit on the twelve nine you know, um, might push the nine a little forward and might give a little more cut to the 14. I think that's what he's looking at. Well, if he's going to do that, I, th I guess he's going to draw the cue ball back for, for safety. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, hitting it this hard, I don't know how safe it can be unless he's behind the seven ball. Oh, it was laying nice. You don't have to worry about safeties uh, when you pocket yeah. those balls. No. I guess the f nine got on the fifteen where it didn't go, and the uh, yeah. fifteen didn't go itself. That's that's a terrible roll. He's gonna have to shoot to five, and bank the deuce. 
It's all right though. How, oh, let's see. It's got five, five. There's, it's four nothing lead right now. And he's got the five ball for the fifth ball. The two ball banks. I guess he's going to try and sh get position on the two. Come across the table and get position. Touchy shot. He's been kind of short on these kind of shots. Get all the way across. What a big stroke on that one. He wants to make this seven ball. He wants that to go in. Mm -hmm. no. Well, that'll be the end of that run. I don't see any reason to really shoot the deuce. The risk reward isn't very great. Yeah, it's very possible to miss the two and oh, yeah. wobble, bobble the pocket. Anything could happen on this. Yeah, he's got five, and and Efren uh, is about to get his first ball, uh, thanks to Shannon, as far as I mean Shannon making it for him. Mm -hmm. That's a big game for Shannon, though. I mean, he's, uh, Efren broke the balls right here, and Shannon's break next, even though Shannon's break hasn't really been what he's wanted. I, I'm looking at that 15-9 combination into Efren's pocket. I don't know. I think the two's in the way right now. Well, right. Yeah, it but is. But later on, it might not be. That's right. Well, it, I mean, he could he could even, you know, if he wants to get crazy, he could move it right now. The, the, the two ball. No, no telling what Efren yeah, might do it, from it right could, here. It could be banked into, hey, what? What, what a shot that would be. No, Efren, even Efren wouldn't do that. Bank the two into the 11, 13, 15, 9 combination. I know he'd love to get him behind the 13 and the 10, right, the 12 and the 10 right there. Like bank the two across. Come one, I'm, that's where he'd like to get him. He wants to get him froze on a ball right here some kind of way. Because if he just moves, clips off the six and comes up to the end, goes up to the end rail, Shannon's just going to move the two away. Which is, I guess, all effort. That's all he had. Well, if Shannon moves the two, yeah, he's looking at it. He's looking at the four ball kick combination. I also wonder if there's a billiard off from the, uh, what do you for think the nine ball, off from the 15. Not right now, but if the cue ball were where the two was. Well, if the nine was a little funny, I mean, if the nine goes in Efren's hole... He could shoot the two would follow. Well, see, Shannon's well, just playing a little percentage here, saying, "Well, if there's a Efren's chance he might make it, let me get a couple out of play." Right. He must have looked pretty carefully at this four-ball combination. It must not go. Efren's looking at the six down table. Efren's doing what you always want to do when you're running in a game is. Get the balls back down table. Ooh, Efren's. Turn that loose. Yeah. Nothing goes for Shannon, though, I don't think. Or else he would have got his position on him earlier. Tell you what he could do, though, is just shoot the two over to the side rail and run the cue ball right up on the 15 and 9. Just wiggle mm -hmm. the 15 and 9 a little bit. Mm-hmm. Freeze it real tight on the 15. Yeah. That's so he doesn't have a uh, bank on the two and a, or a cut on the nine. Yeah, just going to hit this real super soft. Oh, oh, I see. I didn't okay. know he could do that. Oh, that's all right. Yeah, that's a nice shot. Mm -hmm. I don't know if Efren has some kind of notion that this bank might go, but no, no way. Efren's touch is just amazing. Shannon leads this match, this game, five to one. Efren leads the match two to zero. It's a race to three for fifteen thousand dollars for first place money. Shannon's looking at a th three ball combination bank. The only problem I see with that is. A number of them, the 11 or 13, could come back up from back up table all the way back down and sell out just in case he doesn't make it.
Efren's a difficult guy to play because he's just... You almost have to go back to playing really traditional one pocket against him. If you get to where you start worrying about everything that's going on, it, it gets you where you can't really play. I was thinking he might do this right here. Well, it, the fans haven't left the stands and the uh, internet viewers haven't left the computers. We've got over 3,100 people that have visited the live stream tonight. We're glad that you joined us. For those of you who have just recently joined us, I'm Joey Augustin, Joey A. from the Internet Pool Forums, and I'm here with Jeremy Jones. He's left Shannon a bank here if Shannon wants it. I don't know if he's going to want to shoot at it or not on the slick table. I'm thinking Shannon's going to try and move some balls out of, out of dodge here. That's what I would do. I would bank the 15 back into the 11-13, moving them out. Mm. This is just one of these get away from you right here and... He's such a good banker, though. Yeah, he is, but, I mean, the table's so slick, Joe. He hit it well, though. Fantastic. Well, you have to say you hit it perfect. How about the 6-1? Uh, That's a little bad angle there. I don't think he can make anything. Oh, he's going to try and move a few balls? Uh... I think, I think so. I mean, my 15 might go. Oh, okay. This is a good shot. He's gonna. He's trying to keep the heat on Efren right here. Well, he's finally getting that cue ball down table and got yeah, a couple of balls uh, facing his pocket. And that's funny. What? That's another conversation that he and I had. He said they're in between the two sets here. This in between the right before the start of the second set. And he said, "Do you think I really played bad?" And I said, "No." I said. Uh, I said, but try and get the cue ball to the a little bit more in effort. I mean, he's playing, mm -hmm. he's playing aggressive, and uh, l let him try and come with a tough shot. I think he's taking your advice. Because it's practically the cue ball's frozen on that back rail. Yeah, Efren don't doesn't like this kind of stuff. No, which I don't either. <laughs> I don't know anybody that does, but. Again, once again, the cue ball, you. With great one-pocket players, you, you, when they leave the table, uh, it's almost always uh, frozen to the rail or close to the rail so that the opponent or, cannot uh, bridge off from the, the base of the slate. Or on another ball. Or on another ball, jacked up, exactly. This shot here, I don't know. I mean, he, this is a little touchy right here because he doesn't really have anything on the low rail down here. I mean, what he's looking at doing is stick, stick an effort, like shooting through the one and stick an effort up by the 12. The only problem is Efren might shoot a bank and draw the cue ball back down here for position of some sort. No telling what he might do from right here. Like right here, he might cut the six. Hmm. I'm telling you. Man. I'm telling you, he might cut the six ball in right here and get position on the 11. And get position on the 11? Yeah, it'd be one, two, three rails. Zigzag the cue ball across. He can beat the kiss. Good call. The count in this third game is six to one. She's in a three rail this time, I think. And swing the cue ball at the table. Ooh. It's going to zigzag across three rails. I think if he can beat the kiss, it's laying pretty good. And again, he's gotten the balls out of position now to where he can afford to go for a little bit of this. Wow. Oh, no. He said it terrible. Oh, boy. Well, kind of hit it with outside English. I thought he had to hit that with inside, Joey. I guess he wasn't con concerned about the, trying to make the object ball at all. S say that again, uh, Jeremy? Well, the three-railer, I think uh. you need to hit it with like a center, center right English. Center right, like okay. You hit it with left. Mm-hmm. Well... No position for Efren, though. A little weak. Yeah, he might have a bank on the six, though. I think that's what he's got to look at right here is the bank on the six. Might not be able to get the... Well, he, he, he can he can put that cue ball on this back rail, but he's going to make a really fine shot to do that. 
He might just go all out for the 15. You never know. No, he's ducking. Okay. Efren's got a 2 nothing lead, even though he's behind in this game 6-2. to two. Mm. He's going to try and make Shannon earn it for these last two balls. The problem with this shot right here, there, I mean, this is all Shannon can do. I mean, I'm not saying it's a bad shot. But after this shot's done, he's going to come back to the end rail with the cue ball, okay? Right. Like so. Mm -hmm. But now Efren... If Efren doesn't have something offensive he likes, he's going to shoot the six away and leave the cue ball in the end rail. Now, Shannon's got to be the first one to send the cue ball up table towards one of them balls. Understand? Because mm -hmm. he ain't going to be able to have a ball down here to get back to the end rail off of. See, you don't want to be the first one that has to come off the end rail and shoot past the side pockets. You understand? Right. That's another great tip for you. People out there viewing the live stream. Yeah, Efren wants to freeze this cue ball right here. them all down there where Shannon has to go up table and potentially leave Efren something of a maneuver. No freeze there. No, if he, see, if he froze that ball, Shannon couldn't shoot this bank. Right. And really, it's a pretty dangerous shot anyway. Only, only way it can be really dangerous, though, is if you hit it pretty bad. He's going to hit it pocket speed, don't you think? I would think so. He might draw his ball. I don't know. He hadn't made one of those yet, though. You better oh, hope that doesn't go in. You better hope it doesn't Look go at in Efren. off the 15. Look at Efren. Look oh, at Efren. my goodness. Oh, my. Efren's laughing at him. <laughs> That's just how he is. Mm -mm, you can't mm -mm. take it personal. That's just he laughs at himself as much as he laughs at, at uh, his opponent. So. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> it's nothing personal. It's just one of them things. Now let's see. Efren needs six. Let's see if he gets them. If he gets on the ten, he he'll probably get them. He's going to try and get on the ten ball right now. I, I believe. If you get on ten, the ten, how good see, did he hit that ball? Well, either angle, you have another ball. If you're on this angle, like he has, he has a six. If he's on the other angle, he can get on the one. This could be all she wrote, folks. Uh, oh, and he's gotten he's gotten perfect. If he can come in between the thirteen and the two, is that thirteen or the twelve? Twelve, I think. Twelve. It's a 12 if he can ball. come in between those and then come to the rail and bump thirteen, he's probably going to get out. Oh, he just did it softly. What a shot. Bumps the uh, two ball just a little bit. That well, was pretty unfortunate, Shannon, making that long rail bank and it going twice in the other corner. Right. I don't think he had, oh, oh, he missed it. Wow. He was perfect to get out, though. He had the perfect angle on the two to get back behind the 12. While uh, Shannon doesn't have a whole one ball to shoot at, he cannot two-rail the uh, one ball, but he'll be able to... He could cut the two with top inside English running the cue ball. One, two, three rails back towards the 12. I don't know if you know the shot there, Joe. You, you see that? Well, he's, he's, he's leading this uh, game uh, six to five. I don't know if I'd want to risk that. But, he's, but the way the balls are sitting is they're not sitting in his favor. Even though he's got a six to five lead, I would say he, from right here... He's a small underdog to win to win this game. Yeah, that 15 ball is a uh, you know can be banked easily two rails. Yeah, two ball can be cut. The two and the th and the 12 both. Yeah. Uh, th they both three rail to Efren's pocket. Yeah. I mean they both two rail to Efren's pocket like you know two rails by the 15 like this. That's right. I mean uh, that's why I say I mean this isn't a bad shot. You can hit this pocket speed with top running English and cut this towards your hole. Mm-hmm. And try and get on on the same same side of uh, on the on the on the left side of the one. Yeah. It's, well, try and yeah. Let the cue get ball run on three rails right. almost to where it was at before the shot started. Tell you what now. He's left Efren pretty tough here. Efren ain't gonna have much. No, but that one two. He's just gonna graze the two ball, I think, and come back down table. Yeah. Now, if he freezes him right here, if he was to freeze him, 
See, that's why Shannon was asking for the ball to bounce because if he, if he was a freeze him right there, he'd have yeah. Shannon in a, in a predicament. Yeah, Shannon's going to bank, bank the two. two. Right. Absolutely. He's going to bank the two with a little bit of top English running it. Two rails, the cue ball, two rails over on the side rail, the same as same rails as pocket. Oh, he's hit that great. That's uh, Shannon. He banks those balls as well as anybody in the world. A bank pool champion at the Derby City Classic. Especially them long rail banks. He's just phenomenal with them long rail banks. One ball standing between Shannon and the end of this match. In the end, end of this game, excuse me. Efren leads the match 2-0 to zero and Shannon wins this game. He's back in. Uh -huh. Well, Efren's definitely going definitely gonna to bank the one here, I believe. I think, anyway. Unless he, I don't know, he could bank the 12. This is an interesting shot. He could bank the 12, lay on the rail, or he could play the one and 15, both at his hole, if he was having to make this bank right here. I like that shot, Jeremy. Uh, boy, if he makes that one, he's going to send both the one and the 15 at his pocket right there, Joey, on the next shot. Yep. This is a funny shot right here. This is, uh, I think Shannon is going to have to level out and come across the 12, like almost two railing it towards the middle of the end rail and let the cue ball run back to where it's at right now. Looks like he's trying to cross it. See? Oh, he's trying to three rail. Ooh. Almost double kissed it and who knows what could have happened there. He got pretty fortunate here, even though Efren's got a two-railer with top English and try and put the cue ball behind the 12 and 1. You s I don't know if Efren's going to put low draw on this shot. Oh, no, this is a top English shot. Right. You just want to cut it a little bit. You're going to have to run into the 12 a little. I don't know if that angle's going to let him uh, bump the 12. Might not. Sure looks pretty good, though. You just got to cut it a little bit with top left English. No, he's just going to shoot off the... He's just going to bank the 12, two rails. You see it right there? You see what I'm saying? Ooh. Where he gets him on his side. He wants that one to go in. Oh, my goodness. You Look see at what this. I'm saying? What a shot. Yeah. He wasn't necessarily trying to make it, but he wanted them balls to get back in play. Boy, are they ever in play. He needs all three. Cannon needs one. Right. But again, like we talked about, with these, this level, it's really the first person to get a shot. Even though Shannon only needs one, Shannon's going to go and take his chances to try and clear these balls. He's going to shoot this and draw to the side rail and shoot the one on the back of the 15. Oh, oh Shannon. No. Oh, no. He's going to cut the 15. Efren's cutting the 15. Oh, huh? no. I'm just what Efren said. He said, Efren said, hey, that's my pocket. And, I th <laughs> and, and uh, you can just imagine what Shannon said. I think he said, you're right. <laughs> he's going to go like four rails right here. Oh, no, he's going for the bank. Well, at least we're getting to see some one ball, one pocket. Might be the last shot of the one ball, one pocket right here, Joey. But This is a $15,000 shot right here. And if I had to bet, I wouldn't bet against him. I think he'll probably make it. Nope. No. 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 Not enough power. Or yeah, he's got enough power. It just wasn't accurate. Oh, well, he almost left it where Shannon can bank this ball across corners, real close. If anyone can bank it, Shannon can. He'll probably just lay it across the table and come back up, but. Just, uh, just get it traveling towards this hole. Yeah, maybe to He's the middle of the end rail in or something. Shot. Like that. Yeah, yeah, middle of the end rail maybe or something like yeah. that. Like just a touch of left English, beat the kiss. Get a little thicker than you normally would. Mm-hmm. You might be going after it. I don't know. I don't. I wouldn't think so. You went after it. Yeah, that's the problem. The cue ball. Whew, a cue ball could have found that corner pocket up there. 
quite easily. I don't think Efren can really afford to cut this 12 towards his hole, but if he hits it with enough speed and gets the cue ball on the same side of the table. I think he can three rail it and run the cue ball, just try and beat the kiss at the center of the table. There's a kiss at the center of the table you got to watch out for. See? Wow, look at this. Uh, yeah, and Shannon's got a shot. Yeah, Shannon's got a shot. Uh, this is a shot. He's really kind of fortunate. I mean, those balls could have collided. They were... They were pretty close to kissing right there in the center. Exactly. <laughs> well, both players uh, smiling and fifteen thousand dollars at stake. Yeah. Well, Shannon, the only thing he has to worry about here is the one rail scratch right straight up the straight up the rail there. This this. This shot here lays natural for that. You have to put a little English to beat it. Inside? Uh, you can put it either, but see the cue ball? He's made this ball. All right, well, we have a match going. Wow, we've got a match. The score is 2-1 to one in favor of Efren Reyes. And it's Shannon Dalton's break. I think we're on another timeout there. Well, he's earned this one, uh, Jeremy. My goodness. Uh, just, when, uh, just when you think uh, he's down and out, uh, Shannon comes back with a great bank shot to get himself back into this match. Scores two to one. Efren, uh, Efren squandered that opportunity. Yeah, I think I, uh, if you can excuse me for a sec. You we'll bet. be right back. No problem. We're going to take a break. Uh, Ken Schumann's uh, doing a little table maintenance there. Efren uh, thinking about the, the match and the game and what he has to do. But right now, all he can do is wait for Shannon to get back from his break. Uh, Shannon will be breaking these balls and attempting to even up the score. There's $15,000 at stake. Uh, we're here in Galveston, Texas at the World Classic Tournament. We'd like to take a moment to thank some of our sponsors, Predator Cues, Poison Cues, Simona's Claw, and Aramath Pool Balls, Ashley Furniture, one of our non-billiard sponsors. We're really happy to have them on board. We've got Hertz Rent-A-Car and Inside Pool Magazine, Radio One, Billiard Factory, and ProPool.com. The stats guys, Ron Hoffman, Bob McFerrin, and Mike Moon. Thanks for all your help, guys. And just for me uh, personally, uh, you know, it's been a long week. I've uh, done commentary with uh, a lot of players and had a lot of fun. Played in the one pocket tournament, won some matches, lost a couple to some really good players. And... Taylor Road Production has put on a, a, a really first-class event, treating the players with utmost respect, giving them opportunity to make choices that many promoters would never think about. Some of the um, events were the uh, first-place money that added money that uh, the Taylor Road Production so graciously provided was, you know, quite top-heavy and gave the players an opportunity to vote on whether or not they wanted to share some of that top money. And uh, the players chose to spread the money around a little bit with some of the other uh, players. And, well, it just shows what classy people Louis Vicchio, Clark, and Bobby Roan are. There's lots of other people in the production department that uh, need to be thanked. Uh, they've done a great job. Uh, there's been a, a lot of uh, 
difficulties to overcome and you know it's uh, just uh, been a great tournament and we're continuing our live streaming throughout the week today is only Thursday we've got Friday Saturday and the big match on Sunday with ten ball and eight ball lots of things are happening during the week and uh, we're just gonna have a good time with it we're gonna roll with it and uh, hope that you will stay with us and continue watching uh, the broadcast we thank everyone for you know stopping in on the live stream and staying with us we've got uh, uh, let me let me check let me put a little count here now I think we've got to do a little refresher looks like uh, looks like the 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 viewers have uh, just uh, stunned my computer they put a stun shot on my computer I, I can't even uh, hook up on the in the chat room anymore we're gonna have to do a little something special here to get back on the um, on the stream ourselves. For those of you who have just joined us, I'm Joey Augustin, Joey A. from the Internet Pool Forum, and I'm here in the booth with Jeremy Jones, and we're here at the Galveston World Classic Tournament. This is the finals of the One Pot Championship, and there's $15,000 of first place money at stake for the winner of this match. Right now, Efren Reyes leads the match 2-1, to one. Shannon Dalton will be breaking the balls when he gets back from his break, hoping to tie the score up at 2-2. Two to two. And, well, Jeremy, you know, quite frankly, I, I love competition, and I love to see players stretch to their maximum 
amount. And if Shannon has the ability to get back into this match with a, to, to, to Hill Hill, Efren would be breaking the balls and have a distinct advantage in the last game. But it would be a fitting in to the Galveston World Classic One Pocket Championship. These two great players who have played so well all tournament, each player has uh, beaten the other one match. Shannon bested Efren and put Efren into the loser's bracket. Now Efren's come back out of the loser's bracket and has won one match. He has to beat Shannon twice. He only leads two to one, and Shannon has the opportunity to tie up this score. I just couldn't think of anything else that I, I could want more than to see this next game won by Shannon simply because I love the competition and I like to see the players stretched out as as uh, as much as uh, they can be to see just what they're made of and what they come with. Yeah, well, before the, the, the final started tonight, I kind of predicted that it'd be a hill, 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 both sets. Um, first one was three to one. Um, but for me, also, I'm kind of like you. I, I like to see the pressure situations of Hill Hill, and uh, and it's something you always remember. Uh, and and really, quite frankly, these these are going to be the last couple of games of one pocket for the week. So right. uh, I'd like to get as many in as I could, yep. or I can rather. Well, the internet viewers keep piling up, and uh, we've got over. 4,370 viewers that have joined the live stream, and uh, we're just so glad that they've all decided to watch this great match between these two great champions. And Shannon's uh, Shannon's pretty baffled about his break here. Uh, I think this will be his fourth break in the finals. Uh, the first two, he sold out a, a straight-in shot to Efren. The last one, Efren had a pretty makeable three-ball bank. Uh, which he missed. Um. Yeah, I'd just like to say a quick hello to Fat Boy and Steve Lomax out there. We appreciate y'all joining the stream, all the rest of you viewers. We really appreciate it. Uh, thanks a lot, guys. And uh, I think, uh, let's see, is, uh, Shannon made, yeah, Shannon's back and uh, Efren. Oh, now, has Efren taken a break? Yeah, well, I don't know if he's taking a break, but uh, I think he left before Shannon got back. He didn't know Shannon was on his way. Uh, I thought we were just about ready to start the match, and I see Efren's making his way back in, into the pit. Yeah. And so Shannon will be breaking. Well, it's been, like I said, a long six days after uh, so far here in Galveston. And, uh, you know, these guys are trying to gather themselves. It's late in the night. Shannon, I told him on this little break not to baby his break. That way he'll get a little bit better connection, I think. You hit that a little firmer. That's a little better there. I like that a little better. Mm -hmm. A lot better. Almost made the one ball. Yeah, well, you see the cue ball is much better with a... Uh, he was more aggressive on that shot, on, on the swing. Right. You know, and, and the cue ball killed a lot better the way it was supposed to rather than catching that corner ball. I mean, the slick table, the corner ball is going to travel a little further than normal tables. So you can't worry about that as much. You just got to plant the cue ball where it's supposed to be. Well, you gave him some great advice, and uh, hopefully it'll put him back into uh, this match and let him tie up the uh, match 2-2. Uh, two to two. He's made a great break, and uh, we'll just have to see uh, what happens from here. I expect to see Efren make this one ball myself, uh, unless the 311 is wired. You know, uh, can he get to the one? I don't know if he can get. To, I mean, I guess real first he can get to the one, but yeah, I think he can. Okay, but I'm looking at that 311, and I swear it looks like it goes between the 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 the, the six and two. Um, possibly. But where the cue ball was at, I don't even know if he could have got to it, to be honest with you. The cue ball was up around the middle diamond. He's made a really nice shot here. He, the way the balls are laying and the two so close to his pocket, like I was talking about earlier, it's you kind of slow a good player down when you can put him froze on the end rail there. Yep. Looks like um, Efren might have overheard your advice to Shannon from uh, the last uh, game. Yeah, well, I think if the 311 isn't wired, I think he's going to shoot the two come off 
what would be our left side of the two, running the cue to the six, kind of just banking the two up mm. with a little bit of speed and let the cue ball come back up off the off the two. I think that's his, really his only play. And you know? now the 311 has a lot to do with that. Oh, he's gonna, he's played it softly instead. He's must not be too worried about the 311. Mustn't be. But the three into the, I guess the three into the low part of the pack isn't too good either. Yeah. How about, how about that 5'8 uh, two railer? I, oh, he can't get to it. <laughs> yeah, I don't think he can get to that. <laughs> Efren might try and play off the two, but one problem with that is it, if you don't leave Shannon froze up on the in rail, Shannon's going to have a lot of opportunity against Efren. I think he might bank the 15 two rails into the stack, kind of just rubbing a few balls over to his side and planting them right there. Well, I don't know how easy it's going to be for him to get the 15 past the three and still, you know, run into the stack. And maybe maybe the top portion of the stack, but... Well, I think he can put a little inside and make it kill kind of straight off the second rail. Mm -hmm. He could shoot off the four and just draw his ball one rail over behind the 311 and, and the four would go into the 10, pushing the 12 and a few other balls on his side. Could bank the two and run the cue ball up table. There's nothing wrong with that. I mean, it's not fabulous, but. He might, uh, you know, if he doesn't leave that cue frozen on that back rail, though, he could leave uh, uh, Shannon a, a three railer on the two and freezing the cue behind the six ball. He could leave him a number of things, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. If he doesn't put the two in near the hole, Shannon could have a shot on the 12 to maybe wiggle some balls and, and freeze them in the stack some kind of way. Efren, uh, he's taking this much time. He's trying to think of something to send towards his pocket. but He's just going to graze the six and go all the way back up table. Oh, that ain't very good. I don't like that. I don't, I don't quite understand it myself. Well, he's hoping Shannon will leave him down there again, but I don't see it happening. Shannon's going to check that six out carefully, you know? Yeah, Shannon's going to, well, Shannon's going to move three or four balls to his side, and he's going to let the cue ball come right up towards the two. The cue ball's going to be right, in, should be right next to the two ball after this. The four is going to go into the 11, open the three and the 11 up. Ah, uh, he's hit a little weak. Oh, not too bad. See, I just don't want to leave Efren in this 10 ball bank right here. That's why I was kind of thinking, he'd get the cue all up higher by the two ball. Because you can book Efren's going to do something with this 10 right here. Is he going to cross bank this 10? No, I think he's just going to get it near the hole and try and put him behind the three. Oh, okay, just move move, move the 10 ball, not try and make it. Right. I think, anyway. I mean, you can't always see the best angle here, but I think he can make it. Oh, he's... He's giving up a shot. I think, Ooh, I think he can make the 10. Blake Tander. I don't know. It's close. He's got a number of ways to plan him here. He can come off the 7 and put him behind the 6 and the mm. 4. He could come off the 14, come back and put him on the 12 and 13. That's probably the shot I like the best. It's real close to him making that 10, though. Sure looks like he can twirl right in to me, Joey. Yeah. He doesn't like he it. He says, nope. Problem with this shot here is he needs to really make sure he plants him. Or else Efren might have a bank, long rail bank, and get behind them balls. He got, it, got underneath the six. Yeah, good shot. Mm-hmm. This is where the magician goes to work right here, Ooh. usually. He's yeah. going to graze the six and send him up in the corner, I believe. Get behind the eight and five so behind he can't the bank the five. ten. Mm -hmm. But if Shannon... I mean, cut the ten. Right. If Shannon doesn't uh, panic too much, Shannon's still got the advantage here. Oh, yeah. 
Well, I mean, right now, Efren's on the defensive right now. He's yeah. fighting to keep Shannon off of my shot. I really think this is the shot, though, should graze. Unless he's got something he can move some of these balls with, but I don't think so. I think he's got to graze the six and send him up at the top left in corner pocket. I don't know if he hit the six. I don't think he did. Hey, do you leave him a piece of the 10, Joe? Joey? It's very close, but I think he can make the 10. Well, I'm not saying that it's going to give him much. I think, actually, if he cuts the 10 in, He'll run into the three, but I think the cue ball still moves out of out of out of the way. So I mean, it's a little bit at risk on getting a shot. To be honest with you. It looks, but, it looks but as long like as you make sure you're going to make it. In English, he doesn't have yeah. to worry about you know deflect cue ball deflection. But I'm, yeah, hit it with center ball. Look at oh, this roll. Oh, he got a terrible roll. Look he, at that. He isn't. Uh, I mean, that's that's wow. A, that's a rotten roll there. On a very good shot. Just hit it with a little too much speed, I guess. Yeah, but, I mean, I can't fault him there. No. Can't fault him there at all. He's going to have to come off the three and put him back behind the six and 15 here. He's, he's real limited. He doesn't have many balls to choose from. Mm -mm -mm -mm. And like I said, don't panic. I think Shannon, when he gets into the move, and I, I honestly think Shannon probably moves better than Efren. Oh. Sure. When I say this, I mean traditional moving. Right. You know, I don't necessarily mean Shannon knows more. Kind of like that right there. Right. Efren hadn't even looked at clearing the 15 and uh, the 11 and sticking them on the 15 and 3 and sticking them on the 6. So he must see something he likes over there. Well, he's... I mean, right now, the score is 2-0 to zero in favor of Shannon Dalton. The match score is 2-1 to one in favor of Efren Reyes. They're racing to three. The first place money is $15,000. Pretty nice purse, isn't it, Joey? Magnificent money throughout this whole tournament. Yeah, that was the only shot I saw right there. When he's rolling him right on the six ball. Perfect. Good shot. This is where Shannon's got to be careful. He can't give up a bank of some sort. I think he can. Uh, I don't. I don't know. That's awfully touchy. Shannon's gonna probably look at maybe even taking a foul right here. I know that sounds a little crazy, but he. Uh, he'd be the first one to take it, and, uh, you know, if he t takes it right here, it's possible that uh, Efren might be able to wiggle behind the 11 ball. You know, he likes to... Oh, yeah, for sure. He's just going to graze the 6 and leave him doubled up on the 6-11, I think, anyway. Mm -hmm. He's kicking at the 6 ball right here? Wow. That would be, uh, too, as we say, too good. That's what he's doing. He's kicking the 6 in here. Feels like he's got a big pocket with 11. Yeah, hold tight on this shot. That's right. This is a one, one pocket shot, though. These are the, wow. What a shot. What a what shot. A shot. <laughs> what a great shot that was. I mean, the, you know, it's a right-handed guy would have less difficulty than Shannon has right now. And I wonder why Shannon broke to that pocket. I guess it's a little bit favorable pocket overall, but... But for a left-hander, you normally would like for running balls to break to the other pocket mm -hmm. and, and the right-hander to the pocket they're breaking to because That's you can right. reach everything. Sure. Shannon's, I think he and, uh, he and I are both, both the same level uh, on the bridge, and that's pretty bad. <laughs> Let's see. Oh, oh he hit that what perfect. A, how's that for a draw shot with a bridge? That was pretty good there. I think maybe Almost Shannon's going good. to bridge school. Yeah, he's got to, to really get any balls, he's got to shoot to three, I think. Because if 14 goes, if he can shoot to three and come across. What about uh, just shooting the three with uh, draw? a little bit of, well, a little bit of right-hand English, but not much, not enough to, you know, to, to uh, throw off the shot. And uh, just give him a little angle on the 15. Well, that's all right, too. Uh, I mean, 
He wants to make it with a nice stroke, though. I mean, I don't know if he really wants to. He might He might slow roll this in. He might. I, I really anticipated him either going into the 5 or coming across for the 14. Mm -hmm. There you go. Good call. Got a fortunate roll there. Yeah, but he had the 15 for insurance no matter where he, he landed. He exactly. just want, he, he wanted to put more of a, not a sin stroke, but a guaranteed make stroke on the ball. Well, there's three balls. He only needs three. So Between. The 14 come across. Or maybe even pinch hold 14 and shoot to 15 and then come back out for the nine. Either way, at this point, the only thing he could do really wrong is miss. And I don't see that. I think he can go ahead and get on the 14 right now, I think. Yeah, I think he's going to do what I said, just pinch it back out for the 15 and then come on. I mean, he doesn't have any scratches possible or anything. that he's covering the pocket on the side. Mm-hmm. And Heffer knows one. Yeah. Well, he might. He might. I think he needs to just go ahead and shoot the 15 in and get on the 9. Right. He's looking at trying to... Well, he can't scratch in the side pocket. Yeah, that's You know, he doesn't what have what to worry about scratching, and he's just got to pocket this ball with a nice little stroke. Yeah. Even come towards the 2 is fine. Sure. Yeah. Oh, no. A little short. But he got a bank on the 7, so... But does he bank it? He gives up uh, some shots if he misses the ball. Efren has uh, five balls, uh, six balls really, uh, including the seven facing his hole. Scores seven to minus one. Well, if he doesn't shoot at it, he needs to just go ahead and shoot the nine away and draw down here to the end rail. Get a ball out of play. So, Jeremy, what would be your shot? Well, I'm pretty. I don't fish too far from the shore there, Joey, so I'd, I'd probably be shooting the nine away. Mm hmm. Getting on your side of the table? Yeah, and, and you know, you already got two of them that it's going to, Efren's going to have a pretty tough time getting the. Uh, oh, he's going to shoot the seven off the 12, moving two balls? Oh, no, he's just grazing this. Okay. I don't, uh, I don't, I don't quite understand that. Yeah, well, you can had an opportunity to take a uh, you know at least one ball out of play for Efren and chose not to do that. And you know the five eight can be uh, knocked knocked onto the Efren side and he's doing that right now and he's going to go up table. Oh wow! Well, Efren decided to, to go ball. for go yeah. for the gusto as we call it. Yeah, he might have. Well, he didn't really leave much. <laughs> Gee, actually left it pretty darn tough. Shannon's like, what do I got to do? He's got the 8 covering up the 4 and 13. He can't see those. He, he, Shannon can't leave a bank on the uh, 5 ball. Efren can make a bank on the 5. He almost might have to knock the 5 away right here. Mm. Oh, he's just, he's going to shoot the 7 away and try and clear some? Nice. He's got to get uh, straight in on the five, otherwise he can cross bank that five ball. Exactly, or leave him steep like this, where it's a little low percentage. Mm -hmm. Shoot the seven, just knock some of them away. Yeah, might might bank the eight ball too, you know. Oh yeah. He's just trying to get a few of them out. Nice shot. I mean, that's all you can do. Mm-hmm. Efren's still way in this game, even though he owes one, and Shannon only needs one. You notice all the balls are in play. I see Shannon. Nope, Shannon won't be looking at this uh, five ball. Uh, he's got pretty fortunate that Efren didn't get that all the way down. Of course, again, he's got to not leave him a shot on the five ball. The balls are spread really well for a, a, an easy run out for either player. Of course, Shannon only needs one ball and Efren needs nine. This is the shot I was talking about earlier. 
Sometimes you got to knock your own balls away. The can't knock it too far butt. away. Can't knock it too far away. Got to keep it close. Oh, no. Oh, no. My goodness. Oh, my goodness. Well, this is going to be interesting here. Efren owes one, so he has to run all eight, and then one will come on the spot if he's for fortunate enough to run all eight. He wants to clear that eight ball out of the way early so yeah. that uh, he's, he's gonna, that two can go. He's going to get above these three, get these three. Oh, yeah. Then shoot the eight to get on the four, seven, two. So he's going to leave the four, seven, two to leave himself plenty of options when he goes back down table. Mm -hmm. I think anyway. He wanted to get on the nine first right there, but. He might even shoot the, th well, I don't know if the 13 goes. Does the 13 go? Yeah, I think it does go easily. If it goes easily, he might shoot that right now. And open the 7 up. That's what he's looking at. Mm. And it's come two rails for the 7 right now. Which is not really worth much. I think he'll probably just go ahead and elect to shoot the 9 or the 12. Well, or he could shoot the nine, drift the nine in, and then just and play the eight next. And then he has everything open. Well, he's ended up a little short on that one, too. I think these guys are having a little tough time with the measles cue all because we've been playing mainly all week uh, with the red circle, and the red circle's a little lighter. Well, they've both been uh you know they've already played one match with the measle ball uh you would think by now they would you know adjusted to the heavier weight and the higher size uh -oh. Uh oh well that's going to end this game because there's a ball coming on the spot i'm pretty sure shannon's going to go ahead and shoot at this one well he might cross bank the eight also because uh, he can make the 12 ball by doing that uh, you don't have to make it though i think this is this is you got to take your shot here Oh, we have a match here. Hill Hill. Just what we had predicted, uh, hoped for. Well, two players. Go ahead, Joey. Uh, it's two players, uh, two great champions uh, playing uh, some great pool here. It's uh, The score is now 2-2. Two to two. It's a race to three. Efren squandered an opportunity there. He had a chance to run all nine balls and, and win the match, but hung up a ball, and Shannon took advantage of it, and... Slice that uh, that uh, ball in the that spotted ball right in the hole. Well, that's twice Efren's had a chance to steal both the last two games to win the tournament. So, <laughs> and honestly, I'd have to say that we do have the two best players that were in the tournament in the finals. I mean, Cliff Cliff is up there too. I think Cliff would even tell you himself he's a little off his game right now. When he gets back in form. I'd have to say Efren and then Cliff and then Shannon are the three best players in the world. One pocket. Um, that's just my opinion. What do you I, think about that, Joey? I think you're, you're dead on the money. That's well, interesting here. Efren changing holes. Uh, he waited till the last game to change pockets on the break. Trying to change his luck. He wants to make one is what he wants. Oh, no. Look at this. Bank on the three. But on the two. This is curtains right here. Does this go? It might not go. Ah, uh, the two two might not go. No, but the three, the three. He, no, I meant I meant the three may yeah. not go. I don't think it does. Uh, no, but it, but it, it, he's going to get it close to his hole. He's left-handed. He might be able to reach the the bank the the cut on the two. He's trying to st stiff this ball in. Look, put a little twisting English on the the three ball. Well, these diamonds, you can make some amazing banks. I'll tell you that. There certainly are great equipment. Thing I mean, is, I don't think he can hit it very hard, though. I don't, I don't, you know, I don't think he wants to hit this very hard, just in case he didn't make it. You know, it, it hits the low rail and the side rail comes back towards the nine, might end up in front of Efren's pocket. If he can make this ball, there's there's a lot at stake with this shot right here. Yeah. I, I don't think he can bank the three across and get behind the six. I don't think that's land. Very well. No. 
He's got a lot of shots, though. I'll tell you that. He's got a lot of different opportunities. I think he wants to just lay this up. He's going to try and twist this softly. Wow, he played it off to six, off to ten. Mm, fine shot. Well, Efren might be coming with the one right here. You better watch out. If he can't shoot anything else over there, might be banking the one. Like he did in the first game of the first set. Mm-hmm. Oh, Buddy Hall shot. The six ball here. You can't no. ever leave Buddy Hall this shot. I'll tell you that. Make this 100%. Your position on the one. Yeah. Good speed on the cue ball. Kept the cue ball from scratching. Well, yeah. He's got to pound this out a little bit. Unless he can... I don't, I don't know if he can roll down and get a bank on the two or not. I think he's going to... I don't think so. This is the shot of the match right here. If he makes this and gets the cue ball out, he's going to shoot the 11, and it's going to be uh, big trouble for, for uh, Shannon. What's going to happen to this cue ball? It's going to go into the stack and what? Into the, well, if he, he's hitting it. Oh, he's, he's not going to hit it real hard. He's going to try and contain, go into the 12 and 8. Have the 5. See, I opened the 13 right there, too. Now he can come back up for the 13. 15-7 might go. I'd be surprised if Shannon gets another shot here. Because the 8 will go in a second. Once he gets an angle on the 13, he'll be able to run into the 4. So he's going to bounce out right here. He's going to bump the 4, and then the 8 will go. Oh. oh, my goodness. Uh-oh. That was ball number five, and so Efren is, only makes four balls. Well, if the seven goes right here, it's, uh, you know, if he can shoot to four and come across and get on the seven, if the seven passes the 15. I think it does. Yeah. He just has to know. make sure he doesn't get uh, hooked behind the eight. Well, I don't know. The way the balls are, I might shoot to 15 because you want to get the three out of there so the two goes. You want the two to go. Well, a, a lot of things can happen here if he shoots the 15. He can actually get underneath the 10 with some side spin and, you know, get behind the nine. I, I, he, he probably wants to stay close to <laughs> To the three ball. Yeah, he's not going to. If he shoots the 15, he's not going to. There's enough balls there where he can manufacture another shot in a minute. He, right. If he shoots the 15, it's going to be fairly soft. Open the balls up a little bit and make sure he has a three. But like I was talking about earlier, I really like staying above the balls. I mean, if I could work this out, shooting this four or seven first, those are probably the ones I would shoot. You get down there low on like three, and you get like straight in and jacked up. Well, you're not going anywhere from here, you know. Mm -hmm. Now he's gonna. Now he's pretty good. He can shoot to seven and get the good angle on the fifteen, like right there. Yep. That's wow, cool. I didn't expect Efren to miss that ball. Great shot. He's gone a little far here. Be sweet if he could cut the three and go up the table. And that, that would be, uh, I guess he's got enough angle on the 15 he can get over. The score is four to two. This is the final game of the one pocket yeah. championship here at Galveston World Classic. Great stun shot. Oh, mm. bad roll. Nothing. That's what I was talking about earlier about going into that hard. I'm not sure if Firm was the ticket there, which is definitely going to bank the nine. He, he can't do anything with the threes, definitely banking the nine. 
You could two rail a 12, I guess. But. You can twist that uh, 14 a little bit. Yeah. But he's probably not going to make the three ball. But he's such a, I wouldn't say a favorite, but, I mean, he's got such a good percent per, percentage chance to make the nine. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, the nine ball bank is a high percentage bank, especially just to hang it. Does does he does he put you know enough uh, low right English on this uh, nine ball shot to get behind the fourteen? No, no. Here you just slide over to the side rail. Pick don't out, pick don't out, worry about pick it. out your spot to mm -hmm. slide over to the side rail where everyone won't have like the thirteen ball bank or anything like that. But mm -hmm. I wouldn't try to draw it here. I would I would shoot it however my highest percentage to make it is. I see. Just come straight over to the side rail. Jacked up pretty high. But he, all he does is slide the cue over, just like you said. Oh, he needed that to catch a little pocket, though. Well, we're going to get to see a lot more one pocket, it looks like. We've got an exciting match here. Efren might bank the nine back towards the 12, three rails behind the three. Yeah, the ball count is four to three. He wants to get behind the three ball right here some kind of way. He's either going to come off the nine going three rails, actually four rails, and get behind the three, or he's going to shoot through the 12 and follow over to the side rail with spin and put him behind the three. One of the two. Oh, he's just going to draw down there behind the three. I don't know. He went three rails, like I said. He tried to graze the 12 right there with the 9. All right, look at this cue ball control here. Yeah. It was laying pretty natural, but he still hit it hit it well. He was actually trying to have the 9 touch the 12 right there. Amazing, huh? Mm-mm-mm-mm-mm. -mm 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 -mm. But from here, I mean, this is where Efren's so dangerous. But from here, Shannon knows the shots. He knows what to do. If he doesn't... If if he just doesn't miss anything, I think Shannon's going to have a good shot to win this game. Now, see, if Efren would have buried him behind the three, it would have been a different story. Got to be careful about shooting this eight ball. Uh, I'm, I'm thinking that he wants to try and shoot the eight ball into the 13 or two railer and get the cube down here by the 14. Yeah, it's just like Efren. I mean, the main thing here is contain. I mean, you got to contain, contain, contain. The problem here is you might leave a one rail on the 12 right. where Efren can get behind the three with the cue ball. See, he didn't want to take a chance on coming down here and leaving Efren where he could he could uh, trap him. Mm-hmm. Who do you like from here, Joey? Hard to hard to pick well, one. The the balls uh, favor Shannon right here. Uh, they're they're most of them. Uh, a little bit, they yeah, do. A little bit, yeah. I mean, Shannon doesn't really have one garden effort from being able to send him up table. Well, Efren better watch out here. I mean, he can make this too, rather, but he could certainly scratch too, like so. Oh, he hit it perfect. Oh my goodness! Wow. Great speed. Good yeah. shot. Perfect speed. If, well, he, if he ever gets the cue ball underneath that three like he's been trying. Yeah, you're going to see a little bit of balls going on the spot if that's the case. Yep. I think Shannon's got to shoot through the deuce and follow the cue ball to the rail and over behind the 14. I think that's all he's got. As long as the two's not going into the eight. Yeah. See what I'm saying? Yep, yep. I think that's about all he's got. I mean, it'll be a real effective shot, too, if he can do it. I don't know if it, I think it lays all right, though. It's hard to keep the two on your side, but got to hit it a little bit. Yeah, that's all right. See, it's hard to keep, on the slick table, it's hard to keep the two on your side. I mean, mm -hmm. he essentially is, what we, what we might say here is you got to dodge one. <laughs> I think he's going to bank the two ball. Yeah, Le but it, leave the but, cue ball on the foot rail. Is it a... Uh, is it natural where he can beat the scratch, though? He's going to three-rail this ball, I guess. 
be three round or one round. It's got to be three round. It's got to gotta be three round. Why are you one round? Uh oh. Uh oh. Shannon's got a bank on the two right here. Good bank. I don't know. The twelve might be in the way. I don't know. Mm, yeah. Tell you what, Efren gave him a lot of air right there. There's no way I would have left that cue ball out in the middle of the table. I know that. Shannon can bank this over and drift the cue ball down, too, to where he snookers him, I think. Yeah, he wants to make sure he gets hides that two ball, though, because uh, he didn't want Everton banking the two ball back into the oh, those yeah. balls. Remember the six ball he cut in to start the run. Efren, is, that eight's about in the same place, so you got to make sure you get him all the way over to the rail. Yeah, he touched, uh, touched the rail where he wants the cue to wind up at, and... Got to yeah, get it on the rail. It again. See, he wants to just get this bank floating above the 12. It doesn't necessarily have to go. Right. But the cue ball's got to get where he wants it. This is going to be an interesting shot here. I don't know if it'll spread enough on this table to make the bank. But it's very possible. Efren gets a bird's eye view of it right here. It's going right at where he's sitting down. So That's in. What a shot. What a shot. My goodness. That was a fantastic shot. He measured that bank about as accurately as you could uh, ever measure it and hit it about as good as you could hit it. Yeah, I just didn't know if the, the table would spread enough for him. Well, that's where Efren's been wanting to get for a long, long time. I don't think Shannon can really do much. I mean, he might be able to get the nine out of there and get the cue over there on the rail. It's real close. I think he can bank the nine in between the 13-8. Ooh. 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 Efren was asking for a kiss right there. Ooh. Did you see that? Ooh. I think he left him a piece of the 14, though. Doesn't look like a a very big piece if 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 if, if enough to even avoid. It looks like he might be able to hit the edge of the 14. Yeah, well, Efren will shoot something soft below the 10 and 3 and the 2 down here if he doesn't have anything else. I think, anyway. Here, I might even take a three-rail kick to put him behind the 14-2 because the ball in the spot right here doesn't necessarily hurt you, Joey. Mm -hmm. it gives you something else to play off of later on. Well, the score is still 4-3. to three. Oh, he's shooting off the 13 some kind of way. Look at that. Wow. What a oh shot. Oh, my goodness. Look at the shot. That's a magnificent shot there. That's a one-pocket shot there, sports fans. Take out your notepads. Get out QTable.com. Do a layout. Thanks. That was one heck of a shot. Yeah. I don't know what Shannon's going to do from here exactly. I don't I think he can see the... No, he can't even see the eight. Nope. He's going to have to stun it, hit it real full and stun his cue ball. Hope he doesn't get a kiss once the three hits the eight and the 14. Mm -hmm. Doesn't hope he didn't get a bad kiss. Mm. Ooh. Well, there, there's the eight ball that, that he cut in at the beginning of the... Oh, uh, he's not cutting game. this one. No, I don't think so, but you never know. No, he's not cutting this one. Think he's going to just roll the bank in on the three? Uh... Maybe. He's not even looking at the 13. This must be uh, laying pretty good then. Leave him right on the middle of the end rail. Oh, yeah. Made that one. This is the interesting part of the game here, though. When the balls are like this, you know, every shot can cost you to match. So it makes exactly. it exciting. I think he shoots the 14 here. Really? Yep. Well, 
this is definitely risky. Oh, definitely good. risky. I might have four-railed it, though. No? Yeah, definitely risky. Well, it's pretty lucky to get it that close to the pocket. I know that. I've seen seen him uh, miss a couple of those uh, simple straight-in type shots. Uh, Cannon missed one the other night uh, when he was leading a match with one of the other players. I forget who it, who it was he was playing. I think he was shooting a 15 ball, and he just had to float the uh, cue ball over, put a little low left, uh, low right hand uh, spin on the cue ball, and then promptly missed a very simple out in the middle of the table shot. The score is five to three in favor of Efren Reyes. Oh, well, can hit, hit a beautiful perfect. shot here. He's got to hope he does, just doesn't get underneath the 10 like that. Oh, he's all right. He's okay. But he can't get as many as he'd like, though, you know. That's I right. I think he can pinch draw this and still get the 13, no? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think he even, even rubbing the 13 is okay. Just pinch draw it, soft draw. Might even get the angle to get on the 9. Yes, that's right. Like this. No, oh, well, no. that's okay. I don't think he's... We've got a good enough angle. Well, well that ties up the uh, the game, five to five. The match is tied at two to two. They're racing to three for first place money, fifteen thousand dollars. I think he's wanting to get where he can clear all three balls out. Ooh. They hit the eight. Hit the eight into the one side of the 12. And then let the cue ball kick the nine out. See? Watch this shot, Joey. I don't know if that's what he's doing or not. But it looks like he's going to kick the nine out with the cue ball after hitting the eight. And let the other ones come out. Oh, what oh, a bad no. roll. Oh, no. Look at the nine ball, too. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Oh, boy. I don't know how the 12 must have got the point to come back and kiss the cue ball like that. Well, he didn't come off the rail very much. No, six to six. Each player needs two balls for the match for the fifteen thousand dollars first place money. Well, not going to be able to control the cue ball quite as much. He's going for the the fourteen though. He's gotten perfect. One ball, fifteen thousand dollars. And we have a champion, Efren Reyes. Congratulations. Both players played a great match. My, my. Kind of fitting, don't you think, Jeremy? I mean, uh, going down to the last two balls. Yeah, I thought, I, I think both guys could have played a little bit better. They would tell you that. But overall, it was a great final. We saw a lot of great shots. Uh, you know, this table's awfully slick. So, like I said, they, they play a little bit different one pocket. You play a little bit more aggressive probably because you know you can get balls in and uh, and run some balls. And, and the main thing is to be moving around. It's so hard to control everything. Right. Going, so. Well, this uh – this table, uh, this particular TV table, uh, if it keeps playing like this, uh, we're going to try and get it moved to New Orleans to Buffalo Billiards, and uh, uh, this will be our, our our money table at Buffalo Billiards for people to play on. We'll see how it works out. Jeremy, it's been a great pleasure of mine having you in the booth with me today. Uh, we really appreciate your great insight into the game of one pocket. It's very apparent. Uh, your knowledge is uh, vast and it's just been a great pleasure to be with you here today. Thanks again. Yeah, anytime, Joey. Uh, like I said, I'm spectating now, so uh, 
Well, good. Yeah, good. Anytime I can help you, uh, or you know, I enjoy the enjoy the heck out of uh, seeing these guys. And actually, the commentary is kind of fun. It's really fun. I really enjoy it. But do, uh, do you have uh, any sponsors right now that uh, you, you care to mention? Uh, uh, no, I mean other than uh, shirts, cues. Uh, Bob Owen, um, Gabe Owen's father, makes shirts, cues. Uh, he's helped me out since I've moved to Wichita, Kansas. Uh, I'd like to send out a big thanks to him and Jack Shirts both. Uh, and other than that, I've just been uh, I haven't played as much lately, but but uh, plan on getting back in stroke for all them all them fans. So take a look uh, at those beautiful trophies out there. Yeah, they're nice. I'm, I'm pretty envious. <laughs> Boy, they're, they're, that's some beautiful trophies, man. Yeah, look, Ken, at the, look at the way the light's uh, hitting those trophies. Yeah, Kenny looks Kenny looks a little tired, like he needs a little sleep. I know he's been he's been working his butt off. Yes, he's done a great job all this tournament. Mm -hmm. Efren, come on over here. Well, I appreciate it, Joey. Yes. And, uh, like I said, anytime. Thanks very much. We'll be in touch, sure. Okay. Efren, on behalf of everybody here at the Galveston World Classic, Bobby Roan, Clark Roan, and Louie, all the staff here and the, your worldwide fans, we want to congratulate you on a tremendous performance. How you feeling, buddy? Well, you know, I feel good now because I win. I before, you know, get a lot of pressure. I can't stop it. <laughs> you, you seem to do pretty well under pressure. Efren, tell us. Is this the toughest one pocket field you've ever played in tournament? Right now, yeah, for me, because, you know, I cannot run out of many balls, you know. I, maybe I, I run only two balls or three balls only. Each before you give me one shot, I always run out, run out. And uh, not only that, you know, my, my opponent is a very good player too, very stronger. Well, uh, I think you have certainly given everybody the show that they wanted to see all this week. Uh, people have come from all over to see you. We are honored to have you as a part of this, and we're honored to be able to call Efren Reyes the first ever Galveston World Classic champion, Efren. Thank you. Do you want to say anything in Tagalog to your fans at home? Yeah, I would like to thanks for everybody, to everybody waiting for us, and, and for all the Filipinos staying in, in Houston. And I like, I'd like to thanks for the sponsors, like uh, Urano Clark, and for all the stop here. Thank you very much. Well, thank you, Efren. Not only do we have this beautiful first place trophy for you here, we have a few pesos for you. You can use a few pesos, huh? We have $15,000 American for you, and um, we, uh, we know that you will uh, wear this title as proudly as you do all of your other titles. Thank you for all you do for the pool community worldwide, Efren. Um, you, have, you have absolutely revolutionized the game of pool in the last 25 years, and uh, most people that, that I speak to in this business, we're just grateful that we were alive when you were alive. <laughs> oh yeah, thank you very much. Okay. <laughs> Christina, you got anything you want to add here? All right. Um, well, everybody, go ahead, take, you got enough, JR? Enough pictures? Okay. Efren, stick around a second. I want to get your worthy opponent right in over here. I'll tell you. Huh? That's yours. <laughs> that, that's yours. Shannon, there's no, uh, you know, there, there's no uh, words to describe. I know the way you must be feeling. Uh, I know you felt you, you just... You had your hands around the trophy, and it just got snatched right out of you. But I want to tell you, my friend, you played as great as you could. The roles just didn't go your way. I do feel like I played as good as I possibly could. I mean, except for a few little unforced errors and a few things like that. But under the situation and the table being fast and, you know, playing him especially, uh, I feel like I done all I could do. I really, If I look back at anything, I mean, even like the last shot, I played position to shoot the shot that shot. But, I mean, you're talking about something in the, as much as millimeters, the final game there twice that cost me the tournament. But, I mean, you know I mean? He's a great champion, and what can you say? Uh, the guy played good. Just today he played better than I did. Well, I think it might have come down, as you said, to just uh, a couple of, couple of specks on the pool table there. Uh, it could have gone either way. It could have gone your way in the first set. 
uh, you know, you had uh, you had an eight ball up there, I think, or I forget what chart it was uh, that hangs up. And if that doesn't happen, uh, you know, we would have been talking to you uh, two hours ago. Uh, but um, we want to thank you for not only what you've done for this event, but for the class act you are. You 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 sat there and you you watched it kind of go away, but. You're, uh, you're absolutely a class act, Shannon. I'm proud to have you as a friend. I'm proud to know you. And I'll tell you, I don't think we had a loser here. I think we had two winners and one just got a few bucks less. <laughs> All right. You want to say, you want to say to anybody uh, along the way here? Uh, I'd like to thank the promoters and everybody for y'all putting up the money and having us here in Galveston. It's uh, been a great honor to play with you guys. And, I'll tell you what, if you all didn't enjoy that show, I don't have nothing else to give you. That's the best we can do right there. But uh, I'd like to congratulate Efren, as usual. The guys are just a tough customer. And, uh, I mean, I would say I hope I could play better next time. But I really, again, I mean, I just don't feel like i really done much wrong. I feel like I've done everything I could possibly do. And uh, the table just didn't want me to win this time. What did you think about the strength of the field, Shannon? It was one of the tougher fields I've ever seen. I mean, I've won a lot of one-pocket tournaments and played in you know, everywhere, every big major event there's been for the last 20 years. And as far as a tough field, this has got to be, you know, right there at the top. You've got a few older generation that's not here and stuff like that. But as the older ones leave, the younger ones come in. And it's, uh, you know, I've been fortunate enough to play both eras from from Buddy and people like that to the guys like Corey and Shane and people like that also. So, I've, you know, I'm kind of right in the middle there. But uh, it's a big honor. Like I said, I don't feel like I've um, I feel like I give it all I had. That's all I could do. Well, on behalf of all the One Pocket fans in the world and your friends, I mean, we're, we're just thrilled to be able to watch you play pool, to have you give us the show to carry yourself and to the way you do, Shannon. Uh, I'm so proud of you, and uh, uh, I'm just I'm honored to, to be your friend, my friend. Thank you. Sure. Thank you. Shannon Dalton, everybody, what do you say? <laughs> Efren, come on over. Let's get one shot with Efren and Shannon. With the trophies, I'll get it for you, Efren. I know you're tired. Oh, okay. Well, was it in the Philippines already? All right, what do you say, guys? How about a handshake? And uh, you can, we can gang up on him outside. All right. Everybody, thanks all, all you for being here. We'll see you tomorrow, uh, 10 o'clock in the morning, for some eight ball action. I uh, wanted to remind you, we have Championship Sunday coming up. You're going to see an 8-ball final and a 10-ball final on Sunday, but we're not there yet. We've got two days of great play left coming up, so come on back and see us. First round kicks off at uh, 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. So uh, good night, everybody. Thanks very much. Uh, you want to go gamble? Knock yourselves out. What are you going to do? Oh, you want to go with the girl, right? Oh, sure. Oh, yeah. You're gonna you're gonna go eat something, relax a little bit. You're gonna go play poker, aren't you? No poker. S sleep. You play ten ball tomorrow. Four a.m. <laughs> no. <laughs> Efren, you uh, you got a few ten ball matches to make up, but you got fifteen thousand to make it feel a little bit better. So go get some sleep, my friend. We we'll see you ten o'clock. You have first match tomorrow morning. Okay. Thanks everybody. Thanks J.R. Calvert, Inside Pool, everybody else. Our camera crew, see you all tomorrow. Take care, everybody. Efren Reyes, champion. Christina Delagarza here with Efren Reyes, who has just been crowned the champion of the One Pocket event here at the Galveston World Classic. Congratulations. I have never seen you so animated at the table. You're talking to the balls. You're, you know. Yeah, you know, I get too much pressure. That's why I talk like, I talk <laughs> like that. I want my, I want my uh, pressure to go out. <laughs> but I, I can't stop it, you yeah. know. Well, it's good. People love to see your character. So it was, it was interesting for everybody to see that. Now, I want to ask you, did you, in the fourth rack, when you missed that 14 ball, did you think that you may, that might be the end of it there? You know, you, you had a big yeah, lead. I got a lot of uh, miss. I like uh, the, the, third, the third game. I missed the one ball, the easy one. And, and then after that, I, I missed a lot of uh, easy shot for that. I, well, when I missed the easy one, maybe 
I was thinking about uh, all the kind of shit I, I might miss again. Yeah, so it did get in your head a little bit after the first one? Well, I got lucky for them, but I thought I lost for that game in the last rock. You know, when I got him a uh, uh, pipe to four, I think uh, I'm lost already because I he got uh, a lot of shots and he plays shape and I get lucky, <laughs> you know, the Wumble gave it to me. Well, congratulations again. I know you're still going strong in the 10-ball event, so uh, good luck with that, and hopefully we'll see, gonna see you again. I've seen you all weekend on this table, so <laughs> hopefully we'll see more of you. Congratulations yeah. again, and um, see you then. Okay, thank you. Okay. Maybe I see you again in uh, next year. <laughs> <laughs> all right. uh, Christina De La Garza here. You guys, um, be sure to tune in tomorrow at 1 o'clock as we'll have our first round, and it will be either the 8-ball or 10-ball brackets. I'll see you all then. Thanks. I got, I got something.